first chapter of KMV International Series on Modern Marketing Approach, organized by Postgraduate Department of Commerce and Business Administration. Kanya Mahavidyalaya is known for taking academic initiatives, and again, it has taken lead in organizing international series with the goal to bring together bright minds to give talks that are idea focused and on a wide range of subjects to foster learning, inspiration, and awareness regarding contemporary issues. Having been ranked number one in Punjab in various categories in a survey conducted by prestigious magazines, India Today and Outlook, Kanya Mahavidyalaya is committed to impart value-based quality education for the holistic development of its students. Now, I invite Dr. Neeraj Mani, head, PG Department of Commerce and Business Administration to extend formal welcome to our revered principal ma'am, Professor Dr. Atima Sharma Dvivedi, and the erudite speaker of the day, Dr. Zanet Garant. Dr. Mani, over to you now. Um, I, we cannot hear Dr. Mani. Is she disconnected? Yeah. Am I audible now? Yes. Yes. Revered Principal Man, Distinguished Resource Person of the Day, Dr. Zanin. Head Research Center Associate Professor, School of Business, City Unity College. City Unity College, Nicosia, Cyprus, my dear colleagues and lovely students, very good afternoon to everyone. I, on behalf of PG Department of Commerce and Business Administration, Kanya Mahavidyalaya Jalandhar, extend a very warm welcome to you all to the Commerce Chapter of International Series 2021 of Kanya Mahavidyalaya Jalandhar. Department of Commerce believes in the holistic development of its students. Along with classroom teaching, students are given practical exposure by giving industrial exposure, by giving uh, visiting industries of repute, by organizing extension lectures, workshops, and seminars on the contemporary issues, on the current issues. Till now, AMB has an annual feature of organizing international conferences on the current issues. Till now, seven international conferences have been organized in the campus. Scholars from across the globe have visited KMV and have participated in these conferences. Even the outbreak of Corona could not hamper the spirit of KMV to organize international events of our students. Though so we could not hold them offline, but we are doing each and every activity, not only academics, but non-curricular activities also, by using virtual platform. We held online international conclave in 2020, and now in the current year, we have commenced online international series 2021. Under this, different departments of the college are organizing online talks on the various contemporary issues. Today, we are going to have a presentation on modern marketing approaches under commerce chapter of online international series by the erudite scholar, Dr. Zanet. It's a matter of singular honor to host eminent scholar, Dr. Zanet, from School of Business, City Unity College, Nicosia, Cyprus. I heartily welcome you, ma'am, to the virtual platform of KMV. Ma'am, we are beholden to you for accepting our invitation to be a resource person for today's event. Now, I would like to extend my heartiest welcome to the very vibrant, dynamic, motivating, and always a source of strength to us, our very own ma'am principal, Professor Atima Sharma Dvived. She is the real force, rather, I should say, a strong pushing force behind this international series. I express my deep gratitude to our venerable principal for being the catalyst that always inspires us to do our best and stands as a pillar of strength to us. Now, before handing over proceedings to Mrs. Rashmi Sharma, I would like to take you to the virtual tour of KMV because of the prevailing circumstances, ma'am, 
Dr. Zainab, you could not visit KMB. I wish you to feel the horror of KMB. So long, now let's have a virtual tour of KMB. Thank you.
thank you uh, i hope you must have enjoyed this virtual tour so must uh, uh, dr zanet must be feeling as if you are in kmb campus so after having this virtual tour i wish to give you a little brief introduction of our department so let's have a glimpse of pg department of commerce and business administration Thank you, Neeraj Ma'am, for the wonderful visual treat, highlighting the rich legacy of Ganya Mahavidyalaya and the unique features of PG Department of Commerce and Business Administration running successfully under the aegis of Ganya Mahavidyalaya Jalanth. Now is the time to listen to the valuable thoughts and insights of our worthy Principal Ma'am, Professor Dr. Atima Sharma Dwivedi. Whose vision, wisdom, and passion are apparent in every effort of KMB to serve the society and the nation. Her selfless and never-ending contribution to the field of education is an example for us to follow. She has always enlightened us with her knowledge, experience, and expertise, and also with her deep insights on promoting quality education and empowerment of women. I invite you, ma'am, to share your valuable view this view, views with us. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rashmi Sharma. Thank you very much for this uh, very kind introduction. Um, at the outset, I would like to once again welcome Dr. Zenet and thank her for being with us today. Uh, Dr. Zenet, uh, of course, as Dr. Manny uh, rightly pointed out, that these are the times when we. Uh, cannot be physically together, but we do believe in giving a very wide exposure towards the making of global citizens. That is our vision for our students, uh, because now are the times when you know education has to be at a global level. It may be from any region. A student has to respond to the global forces, especially when it comes to uh, you know business and uh, commerce, which uh, of course you know it's your subject. Uh, so you understand it better than all of us. But I would still say that, uh, you know, when we get together, when we are uh, physically together, it means a lot. It gives a very enriching experience, uh, both at our end as well as to the resource person. Anyway, we will have that, uh, you know, partnership for times to come. But uh, right now, thank you once again for being on this portal. Before I, because I think it's time that we listen to you rather, uh, instead of us going on uh, with our, our side of the story. But one thing that I would like to tell you, I don't know if you have uh, seen the introduction of the institution, that this is an institution, we take pride in telling that this is the place where women education took a head start or it is the pioneering institution of women education in the whole of Southern Asia. So this was the place where the idea of women education, um, you know, went out like a social resurgence because the society at that time was very retrogressive. And so we take pride in saying that we are the leaders of women empowerment and education in this part of the country or this part of the globe. 
having a rich uh, heritage of 136 years, where the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, and the five presidents and five prime ministers of India have blessed and visited us. Today, we are a star college. We are ranked very high in the, in the whole nation. And also, we have national and international partnerships. And so having that kind of a background, I would say that your intervention, your address to the students is going to bring more value to the subject, to the discipline that they study. So with the vision to you know, nurture global citizens, uh, your contribution and your uh, talk of today is going to be of much value to all of us. And hence, without saying anything more, just to be very to the point, I had to say something, but I think now I hand over uh, to you so that we can continue with the, you know, the real uh, process of this international series. Thank you very much for having me over. Thank you. Thank you very much. As I mentioned to you, it's my very, very much my pleasure. Thank you. Let me unmute yourself. Ma'am, we are honored to have listened to your valuable insights on the importance of education and the role the quality education play in shaping the future of young generation. Thank you so much, ma'am. We are pleased to have with us Dr. Zenit, Associate Professor, School of Business, City Unit College, Nicosia, Cyprus. She started her career as project manager and developer at Prologue Consultancy Limited, Left Skoka, North Cyprus. She worked as lecturer at Faculty of Business and Administration, Mediterranean University of Carpesia, North Cyprus, and specialized in business skill subjects like business writing, business communication, business presentations, etc., and business management subjects like operational management, human resource management, managing diversity, and so on. She also worked as assistant professor at Faculty of Business and Economics, Cyprus International University, North Cyprus. At present, she's the head of research center and associate professor at City Unity College, School of Business, Cardiff Metropolitan University, Nicosia, Cyprus. An expert in the field of marketing management, Dr. Zanet has delivered expert talks on international marketing management, corporate social responsibility, innovation management, international business strategies, etc. She has many awards and laurels to her credit. She has been awarded with Swaybank and Latvia University of Life Sciences and Technology Scholarship for outstanding master thesis. She is a proud recipient of Carles Ulmanis Scholarship for successful students with highest study results and wide student activities in Latvia University. She also received Janice Wenger's scholarship for the best student in Latvia University of Life Sciences and Technologies. Without further ado, please join me in inviting Dr. Zanet to share her expertise and insights with us. Over to you, Dr. Zanet. Oh, thank you so much. Well, um, such a such an introduction of my CV, I think, feels makes me feel a little bit old. So, yeah. <laughs> but thank you. That was very very kind. Um, well, yeah. Um, so, um, first of all, I'm really really happy to be part of this event. Uh, thank you all very much for spending your time and joining here. I really appreciate. Um, I think this is I already checked you online, of course, like everybody does uh, before this event. So I saw that you are a very prestigious institution. So it was uh, really my pleasure to, uh, pleasure to be here. And um, I think you are really forward thinking institution in terms of uh, engaging with different uh, nationalities, with different experts. I think it really gives the sense of the citizenship uh, for the world, worldwide citizenship for your students, because 
um, it's very easy sometimes to be trapped into thinking that the world is just a, a little bit around me, right? And then when you open the doors to how wide is the world and how wild is the experiences and meeting different people and seeing that um, everybody has its own perspectives, its own way of thinking, researching, experiencing life, um, it's really valuable. So I'm really happy to be part of this event. So, um, and thank you very much for introducing me. Um, apart from being old, I have a lot, yeah, studied a lot in my life and experienced a lot. Um, I am coming from a very simple family, so I had to always make my own way through the education. So, because my family couldn't support me very much, so I had always just uh, I had to have study always very hard to get scholarships to be able to graduate and finish. And seeing my family being um, um, my family is doing farming. So seeing my family doing farming, I always knew that I want to do my master's degree, then my PhD degree to, to, to have a better future for myself, for my family. So I have always worked very, very hard. Uh, and um, I have been lecturing in different places. So I myself come from Latvia, which is a small European country. Not sure if you know about it, but if you know, that's great. Uh, it's a small country in the very, <laughs> sorry? Ah, no, please go know. on. Nobody said please anything. go on. Ah, okay. Um, so, um, Latvia is a small European country in the very north side of Europe. Uh, it maybe if you know the uh, Norway, Sweden, and Finland, those three countries in the very top north. Uh, Latvia is just just a little bit below it. So, very cold country, very very small, cold uh, European country. So. Uh, I've been studying all my life in Latvia, uh, also in some other European countries, in Netherlands, because I got scholarship, and in Portugal, because I got scholarship, and um, in the last 12 years, I am living and working and having my family in Cyprus, which is the very opposite of Europe, the very opposite end of Europe, the Mediterranean end, almost very close to the African continent, so a very hot, uh, very sunny um, Mediterranean country. So I have, um, although for you, I, I don't think that that's, that's even considered a long distance, but in Europe, when you see the small countries and you can travel from one end to another end of the country in one day, uh, I actually, yes, travel quite a long distance for the, for the European countries, right, from Latvia to Cyprus. So I'm living here and working here at City Unity College. And um, today I will talk about... Uh, Things that is my passion, actually, the marketing. So, um, as as you already heard a lot about me, I'm associate professor and everything, doing everything about marketing. So I'm teaching marketing, different aspects of marketing, like international marketing, uh, corporate social responsibility, which is anyway related to marketing. Um, different other courses, marketing management, marketing principles. And I also do research a lot of marketing issues. So I have lots of publications, uh, books, book chapters that are all related to marketing. And uh, currently I'm working at City Unity College, which is uh, a college in the heart of Cyprus in Nicosia. Um, majority of my students, apart from some part being European students, uh, I also deal a lot with uh, Nepalese students. So uh, we have very quite a large population of students from Nepal, from India, from Pakistan, as well as from Nigeria and uh, other countries. So uh, we are very diverse uh, college uh, offering uh, uh, undergraduate master's degrees. Um, we also are the franchise holder of Cardiff Metropolitan University in UK. So our students upon graduation also can receive the uh, diploma, not just from us, but also from Cardiff Metropolitan University. And uh, after this presentation, I am also very, uh, I'm okay with sharing the presentation with you because I have posted many links that we will not be able to go through. But if you are interested in any of the topics, there is more links to more information and examples in this presentation. So I can definitely share it with you. Uh, and if you have any further questions and you want to contact me in the future, I would be happy to keep this uh, cooperation ongoing and uh, have future events or any kind of cooperation with uh, any one of you. So, so here is my email as well, so you can always contact. 
And um, so my topic today is about uh, innovative and creative approaches to marketing. So modern marketing, basically, because market space, the same like our uh, lives are changing very rapidly. And um, this is what I'm going to talk about. So if we are ready, let's start. And I will start with um, looking at traditional marketing. So uh, traditional marketing um, is very much related to, obviously, um, the time before actually the internet took over our lives. Uh, so here is a question for you. So we have 166 participants. Uh, so uh, everybody knows how to raise the hand, right? So I will ask you a question and you'll just have to raise the hand. Um, so the question is, how, in last one week, we are all in, on Friday, right? So starting from Monday onward, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you had five days. Um, how, many, uh, how many of you, um, or in other words, raise your hand if you read a newspaper in these last five uh, days? Anybody read a newspaper? Okay, we have two participants, hands on. Okay, three, four, good. Anybody else read a newspaper in last this last five days? Five, five of you. Anybody else? Raise your hand if you have read a newspaper. Six of you, that's perfect, seven, eight. In last five days, so eight of you had actually read a newspaper. Okay, um, remove your hands. Um, the second question that I want to ask you, and you have to again raise your hand, how many of you in these last five days has checked any of your social networks, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, anything on social networks? How many of you have checked your social network sites? Anybody? Uh, this is filling up much more quicker, right? So there's already 13, oh, 20 hands up. Um, 26, so tw 27, okay. Um, so raise your hand if you have checked your social network, any kind of LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, anything. Okay, we reach, reached around 30 responses. Um, so you already see, <laughs> thank you very much for participating. That's very kind of you. Thank you. As we already see from this small sample uh, of 165 uh, participants in this uh, event, right? Um, there's obviously some change happening in our lives. So if before people were mostly trusting the information um, that we receive on newspapers, TV, uh, radio, then nowadays there are other sources that we are more frequently engaging with. And even from, from this, a small research that we just did, we can even call it research if you want. We saw that from 160 participants, around 10 uh, actually in last one week uh, has checked a newspaper, but uh, triple size, 30 people have checked the social networks, right? So what we know about traditional marketing is the marketing that um, was working before the rise of the internet. So traditional marketing is uh, mostly um, newspapers, radio, TV, everything that is one-way communication. So um, traditionally what happened right to the customer and the customer has to just go and choose the product or the service. So customer didn't have much say or much interaction. Customer was just given the information. So it was very much one-way communication. This is what traditional marketing was about, a one-way communication. And, and what the problem is with one-way communication is that the customer doesn't have much of 
a choice or much of the world to say. It's not like nowadays that if you don't like a service, you can give it one star or you can write a bad review about it or you can tell on Facebook, share information that I went to this restaurant and it wasn't good, right? Um, there is so much more tools with the new marketing, but traditionally it was a one-way company communication on the product. And of course, when company is telling you about the product, right? Um, it will only tell the positive information. It will never tell you what are the risks of the product or some consequences or some drawbacks. It will only provide you with a very positive image. Think of yourself, right? If you would, uh, if somebody would ask uh, to you to explain what kind of person you are, you would mostly concentrate on your positive aspects of yourself, right? You would tell, oh, I'm, I'm such a good friend or I'm such a good uh, son or daughter. I am very good in communicating. I'm very good in my classwork. So you would always focus on the positive information. But if we would ask other people about you, right? We might have also some little minuses about, about you mentioned, right? So maybe your friends would say, yes, he's a very good friend, but he forgot my birthday. Or your family would say he's a very good son, but he's not spending enough time with us, right? So there would be another information provided about you if we would ask different channels. And that is the prob problem with traditional marketing. So with the rise of the internet, what happens is that we are talking about the new marketing, the modern marketing, the 21st century marketing, different people define it in different ways. But the main aspect of it is that it is technology enabled marketing, which requires innovation and creativity. So we have the internet, we have all the possibilities to reach billions of people because they are all online every day, uh, as you showed by raising the hands of being uh, active on your social networks, right? So technology enables the companies to achieve large numbers of population, but to achieve them, it requires innovation and creativity. So it cannot be any more about the company telling how good they are and how good their product is because people are talking, sharing, uh, liking information, and people want creative information to actually pay attention. Because every time you go to any of social networks, you are overloaded with information. Uh, there are uh, Facebook ads, Instagram sponsored uh, content. There is uh, ads on YouTube. You cannot even watch a one video from beginning to the end without having an advertisement. So because you are so overloaded of information, that information has to stand out, the one that you will pay attention to. So it really requires the innovation and the creativity. So if we try to define what innovative marketing is, um, then innovative marketing is the concept that is dealing with conducting serious marketing research into what customer needs, what are the behaviors and the trends of the behavior of the customer. So everything about the product, including its design, uh, its launch, its place, price, and all the attributes of the product is very unique, unconventional, and just made for the customer. So as you see in, in the modern marketing, if in, in traditional marketing, we said the product is the central piece of the marketing, right? Because company is telling you about the product, and it's up to you to choose it or not. Then in modern marketing, you see that in the center, we have the customer. So the customer needs and wants and behaviors is the central piece of the modern marketing. So um, in order to promote some kind of concepts, it needs the creativity, which is the use of imagination or original ideas to cre create something new uh, in order to stand out from the crowd. Uh, you all know because you study commerce that Philip Kotler is one of the leading researchers and book author for the marketing. Uh, I'm sure everybody has come across with his marketing uh, principles of marketing or any other book. And uh, Philip Kotler, uh, as one of the leading um, figures in the field of marketing, is also defining modern marketing. And he says it's the science and the art 
of exploring, creating and delivering value to satisfy the needs of a target market at a profit. So um, Philip Kotler has developed his original marketing definition uh, many times uh, with every issue of the book uh, and is, he's updating the definition. So the recent one is telling that the marketing is definitely the science and the art. And it's all about looking at what the customer needs and trying to satisfy those needs. Uh, so the customer benefits because his needs is satisfied and also the company benefits in the form of profit. And um, another Kotler's uh, definition when he was working together with other colleagues um, in 2018 uh, on the internet or like uh, technology enabled marketing, um, they came to conclusion that marketing 4.0, so marketing on the internet environment, needs uh, or calls for the brands to touch the human spirit. So what happens is basically that is that we are not anymore buying the product itself, right? We are mostly buying the story of it. So you like something or you are, uh, you are willing to purchase something because you feel like this brand is um, talking to you because this company is so uh, kind to others, because this company is doing so many activities that uh, inspires local communities, or because this company is advertising in the way that uh, you really feel that it is made for you. So there is this human spirit element attached to the brands that um, is actually talking or approaching you in this modern internet enabled uh, marketing environment which all sounds great uh, when we talk it on the, let's say on the paper, right? So we need brands to touch the human spirit and it needs, it needs to be personal and it needs to touch us and makes, make us feel like um, we are talking to some kind of a uh, spiritual entity, not the company. But um, the question obviously is, how does it look in the real life? Right? So what do the companies do in order to achieve that aim of touching the spirit and uh, being inspirational? So the companies go through several steps. You know all the traditional four P's of the marketing, right? The product, price, promotion, and the place. So companies many times uh, think of how to adapt it to this environment, to this modern marketing uh, environment, in order to actually appeal to the customers. Um, then it's also the next step would be integrated marketing communication. So blending the traditional and different digital tools in order to appeal to the customers and reach as many customers as possible. And the final step would be alternative marketing strategies in order to create this buzz uh, this activity on social networks that people like, share, give you stars, give positive feedbacks, and engage with the brand on social network. So we will speak about these steps one by one. So adoption of four Ps. So the product. Um, in traditional marketing, as we just talked, you remember that the focus was on the product. So the company designs the product and the customer buys that product and um, hope that there is a match between these two. But in modern marketing, uh, in a 21st century with that technology um, spreading so fast, um, companies find different new ways how to emphasize the product. Uh, first, um, there are also many new products and services that are appearing and spreading very quickly due to the uh, uh, establishment and due to the due to the rise of the internet, right? So for example, um, July 10, 2020, um, just when we were into the first lockdowns of Corona, Netflix, which was the company that purely could be established because of the internet, became the largest entertainment and media company in the world. Its revenues have increased um, incredibly over the last um, 10, 20 years. It was established in 1997. So it has much less history than other traditional media and entertainment companies. We have, for example, 
uh, Disney company, right? Everybody knows Disney, which has much longer history, but because it couldn't catch up with this modern development of the people having uh, direct ac access to the content that they want to watch, um, Disney couldn't become this successful as the Netflix. So Netflix, purely surviving on the in, um, with the internet, with no con uh, with no other needs of cables, um, working on different devices. So you don't actually need a TV to be watching something. You are, you can also connect it from your mobile device, from your laptops. Um, it successfully grew as a very um, a very innovative company. So one way of thinking of the product is thinking of how company could possibly develop new products and services. Or it can also think of some aspects of the product. So um, for example, there are a few, few examples here. Davik, which is the umbrella company. Umbrella company, very famous in the countries which always have a rain, uh, which is UK, Netherlands, Denmark, so the Central Europe, which always is rainy. Uh, Davik became the first company in uh, Europe that offered a lifetime warranty for their product. So uh, according to their slogan, they say, we want this to be the last umbrella you will ever need. Um, so instead of developing a new product, you develop some aspects of the product that speaks to the customer. So everybody who is looking for quality, uh, good quality umbrella, so not changing it every season or every month because it breaks down due to the wind or something, um, knows that there is this company that offers what exactly the customer is looking for. Another example is um, due to the awareness of sustainability issues, uh, due to the awareness of um, pollution, uh, environmental concerns, global warming. Uh, many companies quickly realize that uh, sustainability is also a marketing issue. So sustainability is not just concerning about the environment and concerning about social or economic sustainability. It's also working very well with as a marketing tool. And one of the companies that were like quite global companies that uh, jumped on this sustainability train was H&M, offering sustainable women's clothing and also placing different um, at different locations in their stores. They have a places where you can donate the clothes that you don't need and it will then be uh, um, going for the charity, um, for somebody in need. So um, using sustainability as a tool to improve the product is also quite successful. So this is about the product itself. If we talk about the place, uh, we know that, um, we know that traditionally we were all shopping in a very small um, shops close to our location. And many times, especially in the rural areas, people had to travel long distances to uh, the small shops in their surroundings, um, which had very limited uh, selection of the goods and services. While that is still the case in some countries and in the rural areas, in most of the big cities and most of the developed countries, you realize that um, there is no more small shops. Uh, the small shops are disappearing very quickly because, um, because of the rise of the hypermarkets and shopping malls. So people are not going anymore to specialized stores. So there used to be, I remember in my childhood in my country, there was a specialized stores. Like if you need uh, a milk product, there was a store to go. And if you need shoes, there was a store to go. And if you needed, um, I don't know, shampoo or soap, there was a special small store to go for this kind of needs, right? But nowadays there is only one supermarket, hypermarket in the center of the city and all your needs from the, from the food to accessories, to clothing, to uh, basically everything that you might think of is placed into one space. And that has changed a lot, right, over the years. Also, um, in 2020, due to the lockdowns, uh, already world's largest retailer, Amazon, became even larger 
because of the sales growth uh, by 37% in 2020. Uh, everybody was lock uh, on lockdowns, everybody was shopping online, and um, uh, Amazon has become even larger market space. So the world's largest market is actually Amazon at the moment. Its market value is overtaking Microsoft and Apple's market value. And um, the sales growth is incredible. Also 2021 follows with the same growth in the sales, meaning that people nowadays uh, quite a lot rely, rely on shopping online. Um, even before all this COVID-19 and lockdowns and everything, it was already a growing trend to do online shoppings and online payments and choosing goods and services and getting them de delivered. But even with uh, this lockdown situation, it was a very favor favorable market situation for the growth of Amazon and similar things. And because of that, also Facebook, which was initially just the a place where people were communicating with each other. They also launched their uh, Facebook shops. So also small businesses can now trade on Facebook, uh, which is another kind of a competitor for Amazon. Um, and um, just showing the growing trend of place losing the meaning. So uh, easily you can go on uh, Amazon, order the things from another country, getting them delivered to your place. Um, things that you cannot find uh, in your small shops, you will be able to find in supermarkets and hypermarkets. So this place meaning is changing quite a lot and companies need to adapt to that as well. And what we have about the price, um, well, originally we were always um, the marketing teachers will also remember, will know that we were always telling our students that the one of the ways how to calculate the price is that we have the cost of the product and then expected profit. So if the co product costs us $10 to produce and we want to earn $2 from each of the products, then we pl plus the 10 with the two and the price should be 12. Right. But nowadays we think of the price as reflection of value. And that is very visible, for example, in the mobile phone market that everybody is familiar with. Right. So technically, or in the in, in a sense of the cost of producing, Motorola, iPhone, Toshiba, Samsung phones don't have much of the difference because it's similar kind of uh, product, right? It has operating system, it has a screen, it has the plastic cover. So it doesn't re really much va uh, vary amongst the production costs. But when we look at the market and the price comparison, iPhone is sometimes double or triple price of some other brands like Toshiba mobile phones, meaning that there is something more than the cost and more than the expected profit, right? Which is the value. Uh, because the brand is so valuable and people want to buy these things. And people are, there is even the kind of culture, iPhone culture around us. Um, it actually brings us to the point where it can charge triple price of other mobile phones just because it get, has this value attachment. Um, another interesting thing is happening around in Europe very, very quickly. There are restaurants spreading, which are uh, pay what you want type of places, also shops, meaning that um, the customer comes to a restaurant and has a full meal a service of the food and there is no bills. The customers are allowed to choose how much they want to pay for the meal. Um, so think of the situation where you would be entering very nice, um, fancy restaurant, uh, having a beautiful meal, and you have an option of leaving by not paying or paying $5 or paying $500. Which one you would choose? None? Five or 500? You can also share it in the chat box if you think. Um, which might seem like a crazy idea, right? You might think that... Uh, I mean, how this restaurant can survive because everybody would just leave without paying, right? But that is actually not the, not the case. When the customer is allowed to choose how much value he gives for the product, so there is actually much deeper psychological aspect involved. 
customer is giving this power to decide how much value a product or the service has. And what these restaurants after operating has come to the conclusion is that they, they are actually earning more than they would be earning with the, their, if they would set up the prices. So majority of the customers leave the restaurant paying more than the restaurant would charge them for the meal because the freedom of choosing how much value you give to something that you are getting is actually letting you to be um, more generous which is quite an interesting trend uh, spreading quite quickly although majority of the europe obviously right now has all the restaurants closed down <laughs> Uh, we are on the another one more lockdown. I don't know which one, if you count them one by one, I think third or the fourth. So we have majority of our restaurants is closed um, completely. But um, when, it, when it's going to one day come back to normal, this is a trend spreading very quickly. Um, so giving the customer a freedom of, on deciding on the value is a very powerful tool. And pricing, uh, as we know, is very much related to psychology. So there is things like 0.99 euro phenomenon. So when you go for a shopping and you buy something for 199 um, euros, you come home and if somebody asks you how much it was, it was just 100 and something right? It wasn't that much, just 100 and something, although you paid 199, right? But it kind of makes you feel that you didn't spend that much. And different things like Black Friday sales, special offers, free prices, all those things that are giving the customer a choice of choosing the, um, their own value. And finally, the promotion part of, uh, of the fourth piece. So we talked about product, price, uh, place, and now we are talking about uh, promotion. Storytelling is one of the uh, ways how the companies are trying to relate to their customers. Uh, one of the companies that use storytelling a lot is Google when they are trying to um, relate to their customers, relate to the people that are using Google. They have ve two very interesting uh, videos on pa Parisian love in 2009 that they prepared and how not to forget Loretta in 2020. I would like to watch one of that videos together with you, which is the Parisian love. Um, let me try to share it. Yes, I think we will be able to share the sound. Yes. So let's just watch a quick video here. Hello. One of the ways, wait, wait a second, one second, one second, there is something. Okay. <laughs> um, so storytelling is basically trying to uh, relate to the people through simple things, right? So in, in the case of Google, it just shows how one company is using storytelling in, in, in order to relate to their customers um, because I mean everybody has searched different things on Google uh, everybody's life uh, at many times are um, depending on the answers on Google because you sometimes you might be lost and you search something you might be willing to purchase something and this was just one of the examples how yes how Google is um, 
supporting uh, a young couple from studying abroad to getting in love to marry and to having children so basically the full full life story in in a matter of google searches and that is the, the storytelling um, there is also a lot of compassion, care, responsibility uh, in, in a promotion. So, for example, in one of the first, um, no, second lockdown in UK, uh, one of the marketing campaigns by Burger King was uh, that they were sharing that, please, um, our Burger King customers go and purchase from McDonald's and all the other places around because uh, it's the second lockdown, lockdown that the countries were going into. And... Um, it was already quite um, challenging times because many companies could not survive uh, due to the um, due to the competition, due to due to the conditions, and it was um, the call from the Burger King to to be passionate and to be uh, responsible and uh, care about others by promoting to purchase from different other places. And finally, the integrated marketing communication. So um, it's all about how the company, after designing its four P's, will then bring it all together into a design of an actual marketing campaign. Knowing that although most of us spend our time on social media, there are still people watching TV, reading newspapers, and there are still different areas. So cities are more internet-based, while rural areas are less based on the internet. So it's up to the company then, by knowing their customers, obviously, knowing who the people are, it's up to the company to then design the marketing communication in the way that it reaches the majority of their customers. So value co-creation is actually the interaction between the customer, the company, the stakeholders and the technology and the company uh, in in a mod, in in today's environment has multiple cho choices it can use traditional tools tv radio newspapers billboards ads blended in with digital tools and when the company is choosing their digital tools there are again a lot excuse of choices me, Zane. excuse me Zane. this yes. image is a little bit blurred uh, image of PPT is a little bit blurred. Yeah, it's not properly like, clear. Um, let me minimize maybe the screen. Is it any better? Yeah, it, ah. it's better. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, it's okay. Um, so yeah, the company has a choice between owning their own digital marketing channels, which would be owning their website, their Facebook account, their own blogs, their own email communication, their community. It can also has a choice of paying for digital marketing, which are all those paid ads, promotions, influencers, so well-known people promoting the goods and the services of the company, paid content, paid dis displays, uh, remarketing and different other paid choices. It can also have earned digital marketing, which is the seem, seem, seems like, uh, although a lot of research is still emerging in this field, it seems like being one of the most um, trusted content by the customers. It's when other customers give a positive feedback about the company. So electronic word of mouth, e-referral, coverage reviews, and unpaid influencers. So somebody who is coming and telling, I use this product, I use this service, and it was great. I'm not paid for it to tell that it was great. I'm just telling you that it is great. And majority of uh, academic research emerging in this field is actually approving the hypothesis on this content, earned digital marketing content, being the content that the customers trust the most. So think of yourself when you have a choice between uh, some products or services, um, which information you would 
use as a main source of information. Something the company is telling you on their Facebook account or something that your friends and family and relatives or uh, other people are talking about. And most likely would lean towards believing what your family, friends and others have to tell about the product and service. So you might look into, I don't know, a restaurant's Facebook page and see all these beautiful meals. But if all of your friends say, this restaurant doesn't really serve a good meal, uh, I, I, I suspect you will mostly lean towards what your friends said. And that is the reality in the market space. And then finally, we also have the shared digital marketing, which is uh, all those interactions the customers do. So the likes, the shares, the tweets, the posts, the mentions, the comments, and everything that we can possibly giving the stars, giving the ratings, and all those other things we can do online in order to show our uh, affection to some uh, products or services. Um, and it all ends up with alternative marketing approaches. So company develops it for peace, develops its marketing strategy, and now it has to do something to reach out to the consumers, something that will help the company to go through the clutter of different information that we are seeing every day. So um, the company has to come, with some, come up with something innovative, creative to attract the attention. And those alternative strategies can be um, summarized un, into six kind of uh, subgroups. So, for example, buzz marketing, where the company organizes some event uh, or some kind of um, um, social media campaign where you need to share, you need to participate, you can get something, win something. So anything that will ask the people to actually participate. Um, or branded entertainment, it's where you are watching your favorite TV show or movie and constantly those people are using specific types of products and services. So I don't know if you are watching, for example, American Idol, you would see that in one season, American Idol judges are all drinking Nescafe from the Nescafe uh, cup and the other season they are drinking Coca-Cola. And there is a reason for it. It's because um, this is branded uh, entertainment where um, things are placed into the movie or TV show for a reason right, for you to feel more comfortable of being using it. As you see, all the judges are in the TV show is, is drinking Coke. So while you are watching it, you would most likely also go for a can of, co can of Coke, right? Uh, or things like lifestyle marketing, where knowing that most of your customers uh, like some particular thing. So they are, let's say, interesting concerts or events, uh, meaning that your company needs to be there. They need to be in these uh, events. They need to be in these um, activities and being close to close to your to the customers. Uh, uh, so in other words, a company has to create some kind of um, interaction with their customers. So designing for peace, uh, integrating marketing communication and then thinking of that one thing that will help you to stand out is kind of bringing it all together in, in a one system. Um, there is an interesting movie if you are interested in this um, these issues that I was talking about, uh, which is the Content Marketing Institute film, which is the story of content, the rise of the new marketing. Uh, you can watch it from the link. As I mentioned, you I will share my presentation. Um, well, this is in in a summary uh, all from me, uh, and. Um, if you have any questions and you are not shy, feel free to ask. If you have any experiences, please share. I would be happy to, to hear your experiences. And if you are shy and you don't want to talk up, you can always contact me via email. So thank you very much from my side. And um, yes, feel free to ask any questions. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your insightful presentation. Your views on modern marketing approaches have broadened our horizons. Thank you so much. Now it is time for us to answer the queries of our audience. I invite Dr. Savina Batra and Mrs. Rashmi Bindra for the question answer session. Over to Dr. Savina and Mrs. Rashmi.
Thank you very much, Rashmi. Good afternoon, respected madam, our very erudite resource person, Dr. Zainer, my worthy colleagues, and my dear participants. Everybody seems to be so much engrossed in the deliberations by our erudite resource person that we, and it is evident from various questions which are popping up in the chat box. So, respected madam, can I uh, take your time to address the queries? Could you please address the queries of our inquisitive participants? Can I start with the questions, ma'am? Yes, please. I, I was just, I couldn't follow the questions because there were also, I think, people giving attendance. So I couldn't I see. Got, I have written down the questions. So I'll start one by one. Ma'am, what's yes, going yes, to you is the difference between the contemporary approach to marketing and the modern approach to marketing? This is a question from Kashvi from Bcom Honors, Bcom Pass and Honors. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your question. So the difference between contemporary and modern marketing. Um, I would say uh, contemporary is quite a synonym to being modern, right? So um, actually, if we look in a very theoretical aspect, um, there is not yet a one single definition how we call this marketing. Some call it new marketing, modern marketing, contemporary, 4.0 industry, 4.0 marketing, which means that there is this technology aspect. So our researchers, because it is still yet quite a new trend and um, it's developed faster than the theory developed. Right. There are some things where we first develop theory and then the practice comes behind. This is one of the fields where the practice goes way ahead the theory. We learn from the practice and therefore there might be many terms used as a synonym. So you might hear be it being called new marketing, modern marketing, marketing of 21st century and many other synonyms, uh, which doesn't have theoretically yet a separate definitions that would differentiate it. So it all kind of covers this, uh, the umbrella of it is that internet uh, or technology enabled marketing is being called in different names. Thank you, ma'am. Then there's another question from Harjinder from Bcom. Her question is today due to COVID, when physical buying and selling are not feasible and online marketing has become the need of the hour, what are going to you are the limitations of online marketing? As we have very rightly pointed out that uh, with the emergence of uh, Amazon, the marketing has increased by approximately 30%, 37% as you pointed out. So what are going to you, although we are all in favor of online marketing because of the brands and because of the, because of the quality it ensures, but what are the limitations of online marketing? Okay, thank you. That is a, a very interesting question, which I think we could talk days and days about it because it has loads of limitations. And as I mentioned you, this Amazon growth was, although the Amazon was growing before the COVID, the growth that it experienced in 2019, 2020, 2021 is due to COVID, right? And um, majority of limitations is uh, related to the fact that Many of us as a, as a customers, although we are very okay of buying some things online, like it's, I don't know, um, it's psychological, it's, it's also our acceptance, right, right? But there are always the things that we want to touch, the smell, to feel, because vision is just one of our senses. Uh, what we see, and, and sometimes the companies are also not very quick in catching up with like nice pictures uh, or visual content that we could see fully the product. Although we can see from them uh, many emerging companies like uh, Asus, if you are familiar, like the one of the largest clothing retailers in UK, Asus, nowadays don't have just the pictures of their products online. They have a videos. So if there's a dress that you would like to buy, there is a pictures of the dress back front, forth, sideways, and also a video from 36 degree video of how this product will look on you. Because majority of the times, because we are limited not only to that visual content and we cannot touch, we cannot smell, we cannot feel, we are resistant in buying. And, and although there are some things that you could buy online, especially if you tried once and it was okay, uh, let's say you bought your mobile phone or any electronic device online, clothing is one that lags behind, uh, footwear is the one that lags behind because we want to try them on, we want to feel them, we want to see how it looks on us. So 
that that fact that it is very much just focusing on one sense is very difficult for majority of the people. Ma'am, there's another question. Uh, it's not basically a question. It's just an opinion. Ma'am, you said that Netflix, uh, it has increased the uh, watching capacity of the people. And do you think it's a blessing or a curse for us? Because it has basically promoted binge watching amongst the students, amongst the kids, amongst the boys and the girls. So are you in favor of Netflix? Or are you in favor of these kind of uh, online uh, shopping uh, sites like uh, Amazon? Because basically what the students are doing today is they have developed this habit of binge watching. They're continuously watching the same serial either in one day or two days. So is it right for the students? Do you think, are you in favor of this? <laughs> well, uh, you touched a very sensitive topic. Although I believe they are extremely good in marketing. For my own children, I have um, set very much limits in watching something online. Um, so they have all possible, uh, on their tablet, all possible uh, control programs that they don't watch more than 30 minutes. They don't binge watch anything because I know how uh, much it can affect you. And myself, when I subscribe to Netflix, I binge watched uh, a serial for like a week. So I spent like one weekend just in my room watching and I was like, no way I could do so much better, like so many more things in this time. So I do not uh, anymore subscribe to Netflix. Uh, I believe it is disturbing my personal life because it gives you such a sense of this availability. You can watch any episode at any time, uh, which is which just means that they are very much great in marketing. And because I know the marketing, I, I try to limit myself to exposure <laughs> of it. So ma'am, what is your advice for our students? Basically, what they all student? have become an addict for uh, online watching and for the social media every time, since they have to attend their classes on their mobiles. So they have become an addict for the mobile. So what is your opinion and what is your advice for our students? Um, well, for the students, I, I will sound like their mom. I, I, I <laughs> Sorry, guys. But uh, having yourself a very strict uh, daily routine really helps. Allowing yourself very much limited time, knowing that you also have social life, responsibilities, family. So not... Um, sacrificing something to do something that you like is always the best advice. Um, when you will be older, you will understand me. So I'm sorry, I don't want to lecture you like your mother does. <laughs> uh, but yes, make sure that you have a very much, uh, very much strict daily routine that you stick to because it's very easy to just get into the mood that you don't want to go out of house, you don't want to meet your friends because you have a movie to watch or things to do, but make sure that everything is in balance. In life, everything in balance is always the best. Thank you. Ma I want to ask yeah. one question. Yeah. Can I? <laughs> uh, Senate, what do you think would be the scenario after pandemic. Since online marketing has taken place after offline marketing, what would be the status of offline marketing after pandemic? Is it going to lose its status? Would it be, what are your views here? Um, it's already in, after the lockdowns and the, the first one especially, we saw that there was, um, a lot of dec slow decrease in online shopping because people wanted to go out, wanted to go shopping. And um, and then the second lockdown came all around the countries and again, it went up and down. So I believe um, this lockdown situation forced us to learn new tools, right? Nobody, majority of us didn't know who, what Zoom is before it happened. Although Zoom was used sometimes for some meetings, we were never that much of advanced users of it. So we were forced to use it. So we learned how to do it, which is great because the same for online shopping. You were forced to do online shopping because you didn't have any options. So you will always keep it as alternative. This is what I believe. Although we will want to maybe purchase something offline, right? Go to shops, go to actual malls, uh, travel and see the, the, the shops and go through window shopping and everything. There will be always this option because uh, the resistance will kind of disappear because we all learn how to do it. And knowing something means that it will be somewhere in your mind 
keeping as alternative that, okay, today I'm too busy to go shopping, so I can actually order home. So that convenience will uh, actually, I think, I, I suspect, will be still uh, keeping this industry uh, growing. Ma'am, you've said another very important thing, like you have talked about uh, 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 technology enabled marketing. So has it promoted the job avenues for the IT professionals? Do you think their scope has increased and should we all go for those IT related tools? We should become more tech savvy. We should start learning those tools because there's, a, there's more scope for these kind of jobs in the future. Definitely. Uh, I always uh, advocate the fact that, uh, especially the young generation, um, which are very much open-minded, should not rely on very traditional tools only, uh, like little bit of design skills, little bit of um, some learning some technologies, learning how to actually work uh, with technology is is a must in, in a workplace. Nowadays, uh, if you want to have a good job, you will have to think more strategically. And every company deals with some of its aspects of operation in the digital environment. So um, knowing the technologies, knowing how they work, um, seeing, following even the companies and seeing how they communicate and how they interact with the customers will actually help you in the future when you will be employed in some company uh, and somebody will ask you, so what should not our next campaign be about? Uh, it would be great if you have those examples in your mind, those ideas. So definitely technology is, uh, is a must nowadays. It's not even an option. And the final question from my side, I think Rashmi has some of the questions. Rashmi, do you want to ask any question? Please unmute yourself, Rashmi. Ma'am, you can continue asking the questions. I think the questions were same. Okay, ma'am, there's just one question, last question. We have been talking about biological relationships. So there's another term which we have come across that is relationship marketing. Is it helpful in understanding the needs of the consumers? Does it help us in promoting our sales? Yes, definitely, yeah. because... Um, when we were talking about this um, industry 4.0 marketing, which is all about this human spirit. So brands actually having this human characteristics and brand personality. So uh, assigning a person like characteristics to brands and the product is very important because we are not anymore just buying the product. We are buying the story of it. The, we are buying that feeling of belonging to that group of customers. Uh, we are buying that... Um, feelings, we are buying emotions, we are buying this relationship aspect because uh, we as a people, we have been, uh, in, especially in recent years, isolating ourselves so much from the human to human contact because of the technology. We rather send a message than we call, we rather uh, be online than we are offline. So um, we want, we are searching for this attachment, for these feelings, when we are interacting with the companies, brands, and the product. So uh, that is a very important aspect. Yes, the company should feel like uh, not just selling you a product, but selling you the whole story of it, the relationship and uh, keeping up with you and asking you how you are doing with the product, asking about experience with the product. All this is very important indeed. Thank you, ma'am. Do you think we'll be able to leave our comfort zones and go for the offline marketing rather than for the online marketing as we are doing today? Since we also become so used to the online marketing, do you think we'll be able to leave our comfort zones in the future? We will see. Uh, I think uh, majority of the people will follow the trends. Thank you, ma'am. So is there any other question from any participant? Because I am done with the questions. Ma'am, should I stop asking? Should I continue yeah. with the vote of thanks now? Yes, we can propose a vote of thanks. Yeah. So thank you very much, ma'am, for answering all the queries of our participants so aptly and appropriately. Thank you very much on behalf of all the participants. As we are coming close to the culmination of this very interactive and informative webinar, it is my privilege to propose a vote of thanks and acknowledge the contribution of everybody who has been a part of this commerce chapter of international series. Today, we had the opportunity to hear the thoughts of our very worthy resource person, which have enlightened our minds and have shown us a new perspective of marketing and its related concepts. 
the revelations he has made about the modern approaches to marketing have cleared many apprehensions in our minds and have made all of us more awakened and aware. We are extremely beholden to you, Madam, for sparing time from your busy schedule and addressing our participants. We are what we are and what where we are today because of our very worthy, dynamic, charismatic, and erudite principal, Madam, Professor Dr. Atima Sharma Devedi, who is the driving force behind all our endeavors. She has been constantly inspiring us to organize various webinars, seminars, workshops, and extension lectures to basically ensure the overall personality of our students. Under our exemplary vision and able and meticulous guidance, we have been organizing these series of international seminars. We are extremely thankful to respected principal madam for her constant support and motivation. I wish to express my heartfelt thanks to our venerable head of the department, Dr. Neeraj Mani, who has been working round the clock for organizing such events to ensure basically to supplement the classroom learning with the practical exposure and also to keep our students abreast of the latest developments in the field of commerce and management. Thank you very much, Neeraj ma'am. With deep sense of appreciation, we thank our teachers for their untiring efforts in facilitating the organization of this webinar. We are extremely thankful to our students also for their participation and interaction, which have actually made this webinar so successful and which have also helped us all to broaden our knowledge horizon. Engineer Parbram, who has been behind the scenes, deserves special thanks because with his technical acumen and support, we have been able to have a very successful and flawless conduct of this webinar. Thank you very much. Once again, all the participants are very worthy resource person for being a part of this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Zaini. Thank you, Zaini. We wish to be connected with you in future also. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. It was my pleasure. And if anybody has any questions, comments, or anything you would like to ask, always feel free to email me. Sure. Thank yes. you so much. My thank pleasure. You. Thank, thank you, you. Ma'am. Thank you Thanks very much. Thanks a lot.